All right, moving on to part three. Um, what about, so this is just a little bit about properties and then we'll move on to our question set. But um, you guys are used to seeing four to the X, 27 to the X, one over three to the X. But what about that natural base E? So it's an irrational number, E. We call it the natural base. It's approximately 2.718281, blah, blah, blah. It's, uh, it is irrational though. And we represent it as e to the x, which looks like this. Well, guess what? I could also do e to the 4x or e to the negative x plus 3 or 1 half e to the x. And guess what? I bet you can predict any transformation that would occur. So I put it to you to pause, go use desmos.com, check these transformations, but do it yourself first. What is that 4 going to do? What is the negative x and the plus 3 going to do? What is the 1 half going to do? And test it out on Desmos for yourself. OK, um, but we are going to move on to what about a real world question for this? You will need a calculator. Again, if you don't have access to a normal calculator at home um, and your cell phone calculator isn't enough, you can always use Mathway, Desmos, Symbolab. There's hundreds of online calculators for you to use, and I'm giving you approval to use them. The only time I would say don't use them is when you know you shouldn't be using a calculator. All right. So. Here is some information. You will be provided these calcul these uh, formulas on an exam. However, what I will not provide is this information right down here. I will not tell you what the letters stand for. You should know them based off of usage. So you should have practiced these questions enough to know what all of these numbers stand or letters stand for. So let's start with this question. Christy invents, hmm, she doesn't invent, she invests. Ms. Jag, come on. Invest $300 in an account with 6% interest rate, making no other deposits or withdrawals. What will Christie's account balance be after 20 years if the interest is compounded semi-annually, monthly, or daily? So let's do this problem. And I say it is easy peasy because it really is as simple as plugging it into a formula and then plugging it into your calculator. The hardest part is recognizing this phrasing right here. Semi-annually means twice a year. So guess what your end value is going to be? Two. Uh, monthly would be 12. Daily would be 365. Quarterly would be four. What else do they say? Annually would be one. Mm, those are probably most of them. And uh, otherwise, it'll tell you specifically it is compounded 13.3 times a year, you know, whatever, it'll tell it to you. So step one, which formula do I use? There were two formulas on the left-hand side of my screen, and one said if it was compounded a um, certain number of times, and one said if it was compounded continuously. Well, this does not say it's compounded continuously. In fact, it tells me it's compounded twice a year. So this is the formula I have to use. Where A is your account balance, that's what we're solving for in this question. P is the principal, the initial amount I invested, or in this case, because of my typo, invented. Um, R is your rate, but make sure you're not writing six. Make sure you're keeping it in decimal, so 0 0.06. Uh, the biggest mistake I see with kids with this question, even though it should be the easiest question on a test, they put six or 0 0.6, and they get a vastly larger number than they should have gotten. N is the number of times, so semi-annually is N, and T is the number of years um, that it would take to, that you're checking after. So in this instance, we're doing it for 20 years from now. So I put $300 in today, and 20 years from now, I check on it, how much money am I going to have in that? So I fill out my formula, I plug in all my parts, and I throw it in the calculator, and I got $978.61. And I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you'd probably save those that cash a lot quicker on your own than putting it in this particular um, savings account, I guess is what it is. Uh, but anyway. Conclusion. So here's my sentence. Christie's account balance after 20 years, if the interest is compounded semi-annually, will be $978.61. So let's try the other ones, daily and monthly. So here we've got monthly, boom, same information. The only thing that changed was this number from two to 12. What about daily? Again, the only number that changed was this number from two to 12 to 365, semi-annually to monthly to daily. And finally, we have this fourth question. Suppose Christy finds an account that will allow her to invest her $300 at 6% compounded continuously. So that means it's not getting compounded twice a year, 12 times a year, 365 times a year. It's getting compounded infinitely. 
constantly compounded. And so you might predict, is this going to be her best option? Let's find out. So in this particular instance, I use a different formula. We call this the PERT formula. Because it is compounded continuously, we get to use that fancy natural base, E. So I plug in everything that I need. In this instance, you have no N. You just have the P, the R, and the T. I throw it in my calculator, and look at that. She has now has $996.04. And yes, that was the most she could have earned from this account with these rates. So if I notice the differences, 978 to 993 to 995 to 996. Well, is there really much of a difference between these three? In this particular instance, it's not. So this might be just a quick offshoot about financial um, transparency for yourself and in the future. Never, never ever just listen to what the banker or your financial advisor is saying. Do the math yourself. Check it. And so some of you might, might be saying, well, that's why I pay a financial investor. And I say, well, that's why you also took pre-cal in high school so that you at least knew to check for yourself and to think for yourself. So that person that's sitting there saying, uh, if you invest twice as much, we're gonna do it continuously instead of monthly and you'll see a much higher return. They're talking about nickels and dimes. You're not, you may or may not see a much higher return. It also depends on your initial investment and it depends on your interest rate, the number of years, blah, 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 blah. It got a lot more goes into finance than just this basic concept, but hopefully it taught you to think for yourself, to check your own math. All right, so here's your question on Moodle.